What's up guys? Link's here with another video. Today we're gonna go over ZG. With the release of Phase 4 in Classic WoW, everyone's trying to do ZG. There's pugs, guild runs, solo farms, and most of them are done by mages. And today I'm gonna show you how a rogue farms ZG. My last video got a lot of positive reviews and I'm now poised to make more videos for you guys. So please continue to show your support and watch this video to the very end. Thank you. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you how to farm 10 different herb nodes in two separate hoodoo piles in ZG. Now let's talk about the easiest node first, which is conveniently located right in the beginning of the instance. You can do this with no cooldowns. And that's totally why it's the easiest, and it's super close to reset as well. So as you can see, all you have to do is go max range from the herb and make sure your butt is right against the hut here. If you're even a couple yards away from the hut, these axe throwers or witch doctors will totally aggro and it'll ruin your day. Now, before we go any further, this is the optimal route that I take when farming the 10 herb nodes as a road. Now, it's pretty straightforward, but you don't want to miss anything. So just to be clear, this is the route I'm going to be taking you through. Now, it's important not to follow this little RP walk I'm doing as any kind of reference. I just pop sprint there, and it's really important to save all your cooldowns, like most farming strategies as a road. Your biggest enemy in this instance is going to be the fish, or the frenzies, and the bats. They both have stealth detection, and as a road, it's just basically your number one enemy. <laughs> but don't worry guys. Here's a clip of me soloing two bats, just for you rogues out there. <laughs> Man, I hate these things. Anyways, moving on. So here's the second spawn we'll talk about, and it's definitely the most difficult in the instance. It's located right here. 
Now, the reason it's difficult is because you're going to be doing a triple CC and avoiding the bats. Like I mentioned, they have stealth detection. So, at the moment in this video, I was suspect. So, what I'm doing here is sapping one mob, preferably the far right one, then cheap shot, hemo hemo, kidneying to the middle mob, and right as I kidney, I'm blinding the third mob and looting the golden sandstone. Now, I think it's important to mention that although subspect is preferable for this farm, you know, due to preparation and having two sets of cooldowns, if you have improved gouge, you could probably get away with sapping, gouging, and blinding, which would save a vanish, but I don't think that spec would be great for this farm. Now, as we're moving to the next spawn, I think it's important to mention that this is the only herb node you will be farming that requires a triple CC, so don't be alarmed. That one's very difficult and it took me a while to learn, and you won't have to do it if you don't want to. Now, here's the third spawn. Let's look on the map here. It's conveniently located right in front of the snake boss, and it's relatively easy as well. And that's because all you're going to be doing is using a vanish and a blind. You sap one mob, blind the other, and loot the herb node. Simple as that, guys. I don't think we need to talk about this one too much. But I will say that it is super important to conserve cooldowns like most farms. It's basically the only thing you're going to be waiting on is your vanish, your sprint, and your prep to keep this farm going. In some instances, you can save a vanish by going to a reset spot. This is one of the herb nodes that you can do that at. It's located right at the altar, and it's not too tricky. You're doing a range pull and kiting adds. So there's a little snake on snake action. <laughs> Get it? Anyways, you pull with your bow. Wait for the axe to come all the way up the altar. Take a step down, loot the golden sandstone. Now, I tried to vanish out there, so like I said, you can conserve cooldowns and save vanish, or you can use it as a failsafe right here. In this case, it's a failsafe. I gotta reset and restell. Now, as you get good at this, it'll become kind of just a rinse and repeat kind of thing. You know, it, these blood vines have a pretty low percent chance to drop. It's kind of like an arcane crystal, maybe a little bit better, but there's lots of nodes to farm, and I think rogues are very good at doing it, through my experience. Now again, look at this. Conserving vanish, like a champ, back to the reset point, and now it's over to the edge of madness. This video is meant to make it easy for you guys. When ZG was released, um, I died quite a bit, <laughs> and that was to find every herb node that was possible for a rogue to solo farm. If you found any other nodes that work, please comment below, I'd love to hear. This is the Edge of Madness spawn, it's located right here. So in the Edge of Madness, there's two spawns that are possible to farm. You don't have to use any cooldowns if you're slick, but in this case, I had to use Vanish. These imps have a dot, it's like a fireball that hits you, but I decided to use this clip because it's rare to get two herb nodes, and this is the only clip that I looted both of them and got it on film. What's important here about this particular herb spawn, or herb spawns I should say, is that you're basically just dodging these imps. There's one pack that kind of pats faster than the other ones, and then there's two slow moving packs. They can be decisive, be careful. All right, now let's move on to my favorite herb spawn. I have a nickname for it, it's pretty bad, but it is totally Carol Baskin's Tiger Sanctuary. It's where all the mages hang out and kill tigers after killing the crocs. There's a hoodoo spawn you can loot, there's a rich thorium, and there's three herb nodes that spawn here. So let's take a look, let's get into this one. So, what's important is to aggro every single tiger around the hoodoo, herb, or rich thorium node that you're going to be farming. You run them all the way up here, 
jump on this urn, wait for them to get close, and then jump down. I don't typically farm the hoodoo piles. This one was just for an example to show you guys, but I thankfully got my blood scythe on release day with my guild. Now, you'll find that you'll spend a whole lot of time here. It's almost guaranteed to have at least one herb node, if not two. <clears throat> and if you don't have a blood scythe, this is probably the easiest way to solo farm for your blood scythe. So here's what happens when you don't aggro all the tigers. I have to waste a blind here just to loot this mountain silver sage. And look, no bloodbind. <laughs> Moving on. So this is probably the optimal way to farm this to save cooldowns. It's important to get the tigers all aggroed and get them as close to as this urn as you can. Um, if you do that, you can loot two herb nodes in one go here and save your vanish. So as you see, I loot the golden sansum, which is close to the wall. Move over to the mountain silver sage. And look, the skull's just getting here. And look, it's perfect timing. Two loots, out. Another way to make gold in this early part of the phase is to sell hoodoo piles for blood scythe. And in this case, I was trying to sell a hoodoo pile and this happened. <laughs> Oh my god, I got to do a doll. Oh, it fucking mind controlled me. No! <laughs> I'm gonna eviscerate you. <laughs> okay, there's one. Just run back. There's one more hoodoo pile we can do before we have to reset. So this is the other hoodoo pile you can solo as a rogue. I was helping my druid buddy get it, and he actually got it the next run after that death, so don't grill me too hard on that. It was really funny. <laughs> it's worth it. I got the blessed get though, like, so... Oh, you did? Fuck yeah! Hell yeah! yeah. And I can sell this because it's, like, warlock. He's That's so huge. That's so awesome. Thank you for helping me get it. Yeah, that'll be 150 gold. Wait, what? <laughs> I wouldn't be myself if I didn't troll a little bit. But, nonetheless, it's a decent farm if you can find people that could utilize the Blood Scythe. All in all though, I really dislike farming hoodoo piles as a profitable venture, just because it's very unreliable in the sense that you can get mind controlled, and you get mind controlled majority of the time, and this happens. You gotta do some Carol Baskins, RP in the sanctuary, and then they eat you like her husband. Anyways, moving on. The next herb node is just to the left of the Tiger Sanctuary here. Um, it's also a pretty difficult spawn, just like the second node, in the sense that you're going to have to CC two mobs instead of three this time, but there's no humanoid, so you can't sap. Now, it doesn't matter how you generate the combo points, but some way you need to get five combo points on the target you're attacking, and right when you kidney shot, you need to blind and loot the node instantly. Now, there's a very, very fine, fine line here. There's a lot of room for error. Um, you know, looting an herb takes five seconds and you're putting down a five second kidney shot. So if you have any latency issues, um, I might not recommend doing this. I'm showing you some good examples, but I've wiped here quite a bit. They are two poisons. Each, each kind of snakes give you a different poison. One is a sleep, the other is a dot. They both suck. Now, I wouldn't worry about the dot too much. It does a lot of damage, but the sleep is what you want to worry about. That's because at the end of the duration of the sleeping poison, I don't remember what it's called, but it CCs you for nine seconds. So if you're looting an herb while you get that poison, you should probably wait it out before you loot. So, this is the last little area for us. There's a hoodoo spawn up here, and there's one herb node in the mountains. We'll cover the hoodoo pile first here. What's important is that you aggro all the mobs, 
run up on top of the wall, kite them as far up the wall as you can, jump down, vanish before looting. Simple as that. Now just to the right of it, in the mountains, if you have track herb, you'll find this node. Basically, it's just like the last herb node we covered, in the sense that you're going to be doing a kidney shot, a full kidney shot, a blind, and looting the herb at the same time. Again, the sleeping poison is something that you're going to have to wait through the duration if you're going to want to loot the herb node. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward, just like the last one. Well guys, we've covered it all. We've gone through, I believe, 10 separate herb nodes, two hoodoo piles, and I think that's a few ways to make some money. And if it isn't, shoot, I don't know what else to tell you. This is kind of the rogue farm right now. And if you're not doing it and get it up on it pretty soon, you probably won't get to take advantage of it. Um, I guess at this point, all you gotta do is leave the instance and reset and do it again. That means um, having an alt or a buddy invite you to a new raid just by simply leaving the group. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope it helps you guys make some money and make your casters and your guild very happy. Comment below with any suggestions or tips you'd like to share. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.